Now, as you can see, this is a very noisy Volkswagen GTI. We'll start it up. You can easily hear the noise it's making. The GDI engines have a tendency of carboning up, and you get a lot of engine noise as the carbon builds up. Things aren't lubricated right. You hear rattling. A lot of times they start burning oil, and here's why. In order for engines to get better gas mileage, all cars use lower tension piston rings these days. We rebuild engines, you had to get a piston. You had to clamp it down, put it on top of the block, and then hammer it in with wood and a hammer, because it's so tight. The pistons were tight, they had very high tension rings, so they were tight and they sealed good. But of course, more friction, worse gas mods. So they all have low tension springs. You can push those in with your bare hand. If you ever rebuild one of those, you can grab the rings with your fingers, you can push the whole thing in. You don't need tools, you don't need a hammer and wood. That's less pressure. They don't seal as well, and as they age, if oil gets clogged in there, they'll stick inside the pistons. The rings won't come out because they don't have much tension, you'll burn a lot of oil. Now, this may sound crazy. We spent over a million bucks and eight years figuring out how to get rid the carbon inside the engine. They say the carbon inside the engine with the oil is different than the carbon that's made by burning gasoline. This pours right into your engine oil. That baby's on there tight. Either that or I'm getting old. Pour the engine oil. We're gonna see if it really works. The whole can. And now we're gonna run it at a fast idle for about 15 minutes. We'll idle at about 2,000 RPMs for about 15 minutes. Now I've read about phenomenal results, but I might as well as be from Missouri, because I say show me. This is gonna test this system out good. And as usual, nobody's paying me for this. This is just a test. If it doesn't work, I'll show you. The engine will be just as noisy as it was before. Maybe it'll be even noisier, I don't know. We're gonna run it for 15 minutes. Then, like they say on a can, change the oil and filter because all the carbon's gonna be in the oil and in the filter. Put in new oil, we'll see what it sounds like. And interestingly enough, even though I put in the engine oil, I can smell it coming out of the tailpipe. That shows the engine and the exhaust, they're not perfectly sealed. The engine oil, should not be coming out fumes of the exhaust. That shows piston rings and stuff are worn. We're gonna see if this clears some of it up. I do have to say over the years, I've seen a lot of snake oil products, but after testing out their fuel additive, I was rather impressed by that. The same guys in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Now I've known Bernie Thompson quite some time at Automotive Test Solutions. As far as I'm concerned, the guy's almost as crazy as me, but his partner is a computer whiz. Between the testing and him coming up with ideas, I can't wait to see what this oil cleaner does, especially on a Volkswagen. Obviously, rings are worn because you can smell the stuff burning out the back. You still gotta wait 15 minutes though at a fast idle. But I do have to say, I asked Bernie, I said, Bernie, how come only 15 minutes? He says, doesn't take forever, but in that short period of time, the engine starts idling faster. I got it set with the throttle holder. I had it at 2,000. It went up to 4,000. That shows me that it's clean and something because it's freer moving now. For the same throttle, it went up. I had to set it back to 2,000. I can hear it going up a little higher now too. I don't know, I think the cleaner's is doing something. But as for sound, is it gonna make the engine quieter because of that? Let's find out. Now shut the engine off, we're gonna change the oil, but this is really hot, so get a fan. 15, 20 minutes so you don't burn yourself when you're changing the oil. So it's cooling off, we jack the car up. Up we go. And this is a really low car, so we need a jack stand. So get our oil pan to crawl under. So we get a 19 millimeter socket. And out comes the old oil. Germans really put long screws in these things. There we go. There's the old dirty oil. And it is dirty. As you can see in my hand, that's dirty oil. All the carbon and stuff is getting in this oil that we're changing out. Drained out yard's gonna get a couple of drips. We got a new gasket on here. We'll put that back on. And of course, we have to change the oil filter. It's one of these stupid crap box plastic ones with the paper filter inside. You need a big socket for this. Okay, now we can do it by hand. I really hate these ones that have paper inside. They're such a pain in the butt. But that's the Germans for you. Plastic junk. There we go. Here's the new filter and gasket. So we put the new filter and gasket in. Tighten it up. First, you tighten it by hand. Then you get the wrench. Because you want it snug so it doesn't come loose and leak. There we go. Little tight. 
That's it. Look at that filthy black oil. Seems to got a lot of carbon out. Now we'll fill it up with oil. In this case, it holds 4.9 quarts of 5W30. So in it goes. Nice clean oil. Then we'll put the top back on. Move the jack stand and let it down. Jack out of the way. Now comes the moment of truth. They're going to start it up. There you are. Get set. Go! So let's compare that to the original sound. Now yes, this is a Volkswagen GTI with well over 100,000 miles on it. It's gonna make noise. It's been abused in the past. Guys drive them hard. And they're Volkswagens. They get loud as they age. I'd never buy one personally. That's my choice. I fix cars. I don't like a noisy car. I like nice quiet Toyotas. If you compare that last noise after the cleaning to the first real noisy one, you can definitely hear there's less mechanical noise. There's less wear going on. I got a RAV4, and all of a sudden it's getting worse gas mods. Used to go over 300 miles a tank, now it's 250. So what's gone wrong? We'll check the air filter. Now it does have one of these K&N filters, but as you can see with the sun coming through, it's not dirty. So we're gonna check under the hood here. Get inside the car. Look in the OBD port. Turn it on. And while that's warming up, let's check the mileage. Okay, it's got 259,232 miles on it. Now that's an awful lot of miles. So let's check out the data stream here. The Toyota, go to automatic selection. It's new enough it should easily read it. See if it's all right. It's decoding it. And without smart key. Here we go, RAV4. Yep, it's got the engine, it's got everything on it. So here we go. Do diagnostics, auto scan, and let it scan away. No check engine light on, but the tire pressure monitoring system's on, but that's not gonna affect the gas mileage. You see here, the only faults are the tire pressure monitoring system. It's old, I'm sure the batteries have worn up. We don't care about that. But we're going to go to the engine system here. We're going to analyze the data. So we go to live data and up it comes. All right, we'll turn the AC off. We'll put it in gear. That's how you can check the mass airflow sensor. And it's like 2.5. It's pretty good. It's about the same size as the engine, which is what it should be. So that sensor's working correctly. You always want to do it in drive with the AC turned off. But I'm turning it back on because I'm hot. <laughs> and we'll start analyzing everything else. The engine speed, that all looks good so far. Battery voltage is good. Now we got the short term. And it's adding a tiny amount of fuel. Zero. But it keeps changing. It's subtracting. It's now at zero. It's subtracting again. Long term fuel term. It's adding fuel. Now you can see abstracting a reasonable amount of fuel. So it's messing with the fuel injectors. You can see the air fuel ratio is bouncing around quite a bit. 0 0.98, 0 0.90. It's, uh, it's moving around a little here and there. Uh, 9.2. Now I'm going to turn the AC off again. And we'll watch the airflow sensor. Now you can see the airflow sensor 3.3, 3.26. It's moving around a little. It's not totally stable. First educated guess is I would replace the airflow sensor on this vehicle with the Toyota original one. We'll look at other data. You can see the oxygen sensor is moving around quite a bit. Keeps trying to change to uh, acclimate to make it run right. Now you can see the port injector, the data's moving around quite a bit. With the injector volume, it's, it's staying relatively stable, 0 0.104, 0 0.105. It's still moving around a little. The firing of it, it's getting somewhat red. With all the mileage on this thing, I'm thinking, ah, something's going on with the fuel injection system. It's making it get somewhat worse gas mileage. I personally would buy an OEM mass airflow sensor, and then I would run a full fuel injector cleaner. These Toyota injectors are pretty good, but with all this mileage on it, was it 259,000 miles? The cleaner might make the injectors work better. Injectors are supposed to spray a perfectly upside down conical shape. As they age, they'll spurter around and you'll lose any kind of perfect spray pattern and your gas miles will go down. I gotta take it for a ride and see what it does. Now this is a four speed electronically controlled transmission. So we wanna make sure that it's shifting correctly into all four gears. So here we go. One, two, three, four. We're 
we're going 40 miles an hour and it's going about 1300 rpms that's totally normal it's not getting stuck in any gear if it stayed in gear too long it would make it get worse gas mileage but it's not doing that now sometimes if brakes are dragging you get bad gas mileage so let's put it in neutral and as we can see it's still gliding quite well even though we're going slightly uphill so the brakes are definitely not dragging on this thing now i did notice that it had one of those can and oiled filters you got to clean them and oil them but if you put too much oil that oil can get sucked into the mass airflow sensor which can damage it make it go bad give bad data something that simple could make it go bad personally i'm not a fan of those oiled filters the paper ones never had any problems i would stick to that myself filters in here and the air goes that way sometimes that can contaminate the sensors inside and cause all that problem now i see this quite often on toyotas with that kind of mileage on it they still run like a clock and they shift like a dream the gas mileage goes down i'm gonna find out over time because i told them get rid of that oiled filter and put in a regular paper filter so you won't get oil and ruin the new mass airflow sensor he's gonna put two cans of chevron tekron in a gas tank and one tank of shell super on that gas to help clean the system out now if it doesn't fix it it may possibly need new fuel injectors they will wear out over time and stop spraying a conical shape then they're inefficient it's not really going to affect how it drives all that much. To a computer, yeah, that data we saw, you could see those numbers jumble around, 24, 2499, 2499, 25001. It can affect that, but you're not really gonna feel it because that thing ran perfectly fine. If somebody would have brought me that vehicle and they were gonna buy it, I'd say, well, it's got a lot of miles, but it still runs pretty good. Don't pay too much with that high mileage, but it's still a good running car. It is getting about 50 miles less per tank. Now, that's not all that much when you think about it. It's still a very good solid car, these tiny little things can make the gas mods go off like that. Modern engine oils can make your engine last almost forever if you change them every once in a while. Now it's not as complicated as you might think. All the new GF6 oils, they have a new symbol. They use the shield here in the United States. This is the 0W16 for the modern engines. To a regular synthetic oil, it's got the round American Petroleum Institute certified shield. This is not a GF6 oil. Now the only one with the shield is the GF6B oil that's only to be used in the 0W16 engines. If you use a different type of oil, don't use that. As you can see here, this Toyota uses 0W20. You can't use this oil. You would have to use one like this, that's 0W20. And you notice it's got the round emblem. But if you've got an engine like this Toyota, they do make GF6 oils for it, only they are GF6 a the gf6a are backward compatible and they come in weights of 0w20 5w20 5w30 and 10w30 so it's actually pretty simple for you to understand what to buy you are using any oil besides 0w16 get the ones that have the round seal on them but if your engine uses 0w16 and you want the gf6 oil that's technically a gf6b and it will have this shield on a different shape so you don't get confused and it always has to say we flip it over a little closely gf 6b tells you all the requirements it meets now these gf6 oils are engineered they get a little better gas mileage they burn less oil they lubricate the timing chains and the bearings better and it's very important for the modern variable valve timing gdi turbocharged small engines now the gf6 oils have been out almost a year now and i do have to say they work quite well now don't worry that oh you gotta buy a certain kind it's a formulation many companies sell it i just happen to have a valvoline one you can buy from any manufacturers and now many different ones are starting to sell it i did notice though at the walmart they didn't have any gf6 oils yet because of course they want to get discount prices so they're probably holding out until they can get a company that will give them a better price because for example pens oil makes that pure premium oil that's made from natural gas somewhere in the middle east they take natural gas and they turn it into oil mainly because natural gas is a waste product there so they lose about a third of the energy but it's a waste product there they flare off so it's an okay thing to do now the Pennzoil pure premium is an excellent oil but it was extremely overpriced for quite some time it was over ten dollars a quart at the regular auto parts store but the other day when i was looking for the gf6 oil at walmart couldn't find it i noticed they had that pure premium oil 
and it was only six dollars a quart. Walmart obviously talked them down on what they had to pay for the oil. They're getting a better price. As time goes on, all these GF6 oils will probably come way down in price too. They already have. Originally, they wanted twelve, fourteen dollars a quart. Now I paid eight dollars a quart for this GF6B oil on Amazon, so it's coming down in price already. And a lot of people don't understand what this nomenclature means. You know, it's a zero W16. How can an oil weigh nothing? No, I mean, I can understand 10 W30, you think 10 weight, but that's not the case. That's not what W stands for. The W stands for winter, and zero means that it flows better than 10 W or 20 W, and 16 is how it flows when it's warm. In the case of these two oils, they both flow quite well in the winter, and when they warm up, this one flows at a 16 and this one's a little thicker it's a 20. it's just unfortunate that winter and weight both start with w actually i think it's kind of stupid that they use zero but i guess they had no choice because they had five w20 oil and if it had to be lower i guess they had to go to zero because they didn't have any other numbers they thought they could use now all zero w oils are synthetic oils but not all synthetic oils are GF6 oils. But this synthetic oil, as I said before, even though it's got the round seal, this is not a GF6B, it is a GF6A. So this can be used in any vehicle that needs 0W20 oil. It's backwards compatible to any 0W20 oil. So in the case of this Toyota Tacoma, you can use it in this engine. That's why they kept the same shield, even though it's GF6A, where you can't use this oil because it's got the different shield. And when you flip it over, you can see that it says GF6B. Now these are standards used in the United States, so you should believe what you read, but sometimes don't believe what you read. Like in the case of this motor flush, Check it out. It says use before every oil change takes five minutes. Don't listen to that label because this modern GF6 oil, it's a detergent oil. It keeps all the dirt in suspension. When you change your oil, all the dirt exits the engine along with the dirty oil. You don't want to flush your engine after every oil change. Generally, you don't want to flush it at all unless you bought some old junker that's all gummed out inside. It would need taking it apart and clean because inside your engine where the piston goes up and down, you want to have a little bit of carbon build up it helps seal the pistons especially in older engines like my Celica with 240,000 miles if you kept flushing it out you could make it too clean inside and it could start burning oil like crazy because yes the piston rings are worn everything's worn it's an old engine you don't want to keep flushing things out with an engine flush the modern oil gets all the dirt puts it in suspension that's why it's called detergent oil just change your oil regularly don't mess with flushing it that's not a smart move Plus, some of the flushes are too strong, and then they eat up the rubber seals. Then you have an engine that didn't use the leak oil, but now the front main oil seal, or the rear main oil seal is leaking, we're going to have to pull the engine out of the car in order to change that back seal. It's not a fun job. Now, with modern engines that have variable valve timing, quad overhead cams, GDI direct fuel injection and turbochargers, this GF6 oil is made for them. It flows better, faster. It can take colder temperatures. It can also take warmer temperatures, so it's the perfect oil for modern cars. But you still have to change the stuff. Don't forget to change it regularly. It's off my grandfather's day. Originally, they used alcohol in car radiators with water so it didn't freeze in the winter, which was fine when it was really cold out, but when a warm spell came, the alcohol would evaporate from the engine. So then they came out with antifreeze, ethylene glycol antifreeze stuff, green antifreeze, and they called that a permanent antifreeze. You don't have to keep adding it like you did with the alcohol. But unfortunately, permanent was the wrong word to use. Because after three or four years, the anti-rust inhibitors went out and it rusted all the engines to pieces. People thought it was permanent and it wasn't. So you still got to change your oil. Just if you use the best oil, especially if you have a gasoline direct injection turbocharged engine, you want to use one of these GF6 oils. And like I said, various companies make them. All you have to remember is if it's got the shield on it, it's only for the ones that say zero w16 on the oil cap for the real modern engines and as you can see when you flip it over is the gf6 
bee oil. And for everything else, you'll have the normal shield. You get the weight you need, and when you turn it around, you'll see the GF6A on the back. So that's the round one. It can use it in any car, so it's backward compatible. So now you know everything there is to know about modern engine oils if you want your engine to last as long as possible. Just remember, oil is cheap. Engines are very expensive. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.